All right, uh, this has been drying for approximately two hours. You can see by using duct tape, um, the resin does not stick to it. Well, I take that back. It will stick to it, but it doesn't stick to it that easy, but we'll get that off. So we had a little problem here. Uh, you can see where it leaked through, so I'll have to get this off of here. But look what we got. Look at that. All right, so let me clean this up real quick. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use my grinder, my two and a half inch roller lock. Uh, we got tape under there, but we had to build this up. So by using our bridge, let me show you what we did here. By using that bridge, look at that. All right, remember we made that. Okay, you see what I'm saying? And that really made it so it would be right. Let's go ahead and get this off of here. Handy item that that was. And then now, when we look at our pieces, look at that. All right, the curve's exactly the same. And I think we went ahead and fixed our old piece. Um, I'm going to take my two-inch grinder. I'm going to grind this down. <laughs> Not using a lot of pressure. <laughs> And now, what we've done, we basically went ahead and saved the owner a lot of money. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. I will now proceed to do my body work to these. And what you saw, you saw basically how to repair, and look at that. All right, how to repair old, vintage, nasty fiberglass. If we wouldn't have done it this way, the only other way to do that would have been using a two part epoxy adhesive, which would not have been strong enough to hold this old nasty thing together. Using your fiberglass mat and mixing it with your resin is the way that we fixed this problem here. And oh, of course, building our bridge. Let me go ahead and see that right there. Okay. Without that, this would have never happened. So always use your imagination. It's your imagination that's going to get you the farthest in life. If you run into a situation and you don't know what you're doing, or you don't know how to continue, stop. Let it go. Go watch TV. Go do something else. Think about it. I guarantee you, it'll come to your mind, and you will be a winner, just like my friend Pete is on this, or should I say the owner of this item is a winner today because of my friend Pete. Take it easy. All right, we got our fiberglass pieces repaired, and I went ahead and put three full wet coats of 2K primer on them. Let's go in there and see what many of the body shop girls doing to finish them out. What's going on? I got these things repaired. I went ahead and fixed them. We cleaned them up, and I went ahead and primed them. What are you doing? I'm finalizing. Okay. What do you mean little, finalizing? See these little pinholes. Yeah. So you found a whole bunch of other pinholes because this is real old fiberglass and probably doesn't have a lot of gel coat on it. So what you're doing is going back and finishing that. Did you already finish this edge right here or something? Yeah, that edge is smooth. So what are you doing here? What's going on? What kind of materials are you using? And I how are you am doing using um, polyester filler. Okay, we're using polyester filler pre-mixed. You got your hardener. Uh -huh. And how are you applying that? I am actually using... A razor blade. Now, why would you use a razor blade on that when that's bonded? Because I want to use the small, a small amount, and I get yeah. smaller amounts with this. Okay. 
So I see there's a bunch of pinholes here. Is, is that a pinhole I'm looking at? Or is that... No, I think okay. that's all right. All right, so you've basically gone over the whole thing. It looks a little yeah. rough on this edge here. Yeah, where gonna... my bondo got dry. Yeah, okay, that's what I was wanting to see. I wanted to see where. That's what I'm fixing. So that's what you're fixing is stuff like that. Stuff like that, yeah. yeah. And after you prime it, is that the uh, correct way of doing this? I mean, you go ahead and prime them first, and then you come back, and then you find all your mistakes and finish it out? Yeah, that's yeah. that's the prep work huh. before the paint. How long have you been working on them? Today. All day long. On these pieces, yeah. Yeah. Now, you got this piece over here, which is our grill. Now, that's actually not made of metal this or is, fiberglass. That's a plastic this is grill. It's a plastic piece. And it's pretty old. Uh, yeah, 1976. Yeah, you gotta be careful with yeah. it because it's it's almost brittle. Uh huh. And where did you fix it on this? If you don't. Well, see, you can. Okay, see. so this is done. This item's completely yeah. done. Okay, yeah. so there was a big imprint right there. You got that, yeah. and you use that uh, polyester filler to yeah, do that. Yeah, and I don't know if you can see, but there's little. Yeah, I see all the little specks little in there. Specks and uh -huh. holes all, all the way around. The way. Really that was really rough. Yeah. So is that one ready for, uh, well, do we finalize, coat that, paint it, or, or just put a coat of sealer on it? What do you think? Um, <laughs> well, that's Pete's call. He's the painter. Yeah. I would put some sealer so on it. So do you have that, okay, what do you have that sanded in? Let's ask that. This is just down to 180. 180. So if we sanded that down to 320, we could probably go ahead, since we used the polyester filler instead of Bondo, and yeah, you got you 320. We could probably go ahead and seal that and you paint could, it. You could. Now, is this the one I repaired? We don't know. I don't know, but I repaired one little spot on okay, this Okay, this one. is the one that was actually in good shape. So we didn't repair that one. This is the one that we did repair. And if you look real close, here's the repair that I did. This was cracked in half, and I had to fiberglass all that back together. And um, so what Minnie's doing now, she is finalizing them up, getting rid of all the panels. Remember now, this is a piece that's 40 years old. Right, that corner was pretty messed up. So we got a 40-year-old piece of fiberglass here that uh, was in a junkyard and stayed in there for a very, very long time. But it really came out nice. I like the way that it looks. And if the other pieces come out that way, I think we're going to have a nice paint job here. Speaking of paint jobs, we're in the middle of painting this car. Yeah. Okay, let's get it done. We need the body shop. Uh, you didn't want me to show you how I do, what I do. Sure, go ahead. What do you got? 80 grit. Start so with 80 grit. So you start with 80 grit. And okay. then work your way down. 80. All right, go ahead and sand that down for us. Now, you're using a block, I see. Yeah. Now, is, hey. it, is it necessary to use a block on something that little? No, you don't I have mean, to. My but... personal opinion, if I could go ahead and talk, do you mind? I would actually use a, on something like this, I would actually use, I would take a, uh, instead of using a flex block that's going to override that and actually sand all the way around it, because I'd like to keep my stuff contained. What I would use is I would take a paint stick and I would cut it this big, see? And then I would wrap this around the paint stick and then that way it's a super flat solid surface that's only going to sand this area with our 80 grit. Ah. So that might be something you might think about. Right. Many of the body shop girl uh, doing it for so long as you have. Thank and you. then once that's done, then I would come back with the soft block. The reason I would use the paint stick is because this surface here is actually higher than this surface. And when you're using a flex block, what's happening is that flex block, if you watch my finger, it's pushing in on that flex block, do you see? Ah. And it's making an indention, and it's sanding around this more than it is this. So you might want to try that with a paint stick, and you'll probably get done ten times faster. Something my friend Pete's uh, hanging off and passing on to you. Let me grab that info. There you go. So here's the car right here. I'm getting ready to go ahead and spot prime it. When I say spot prime, I'm putting epoxy sealer. I'm sorry, spot seal, not primer. Always remember, uh, uh, epoxy sealer is not a sandable primer. It's only designed for a sealer only before you paint or if you're going to protect your bare metal or fiberglass or whatever you're working on. Um, you can see there are spots where we burn through. I'll go ahead and spot prime that. I'll put some down this area here. I'll go ahead and spot seal this with my epoxy primer. And anything that's red, that'll seal that old paint in where I don't have to have blister or burn back, bleed back, whatever. So our fiberglass pieces are really looking good. I like the way they're looking. Uh, I'm really excited to see the finished product on them. I hope you are too. And when we come back, hopefully those will be painted and done. And we'll be telling ourselves, good job. 
Let's get this thing out of here. Now that made the body shop girl went ahead and fixed all the imperfections on it. I went ahead and sprayed one, or should I say two final coats of primer on our fiberglass pieces. Now, once again, I want to tell everybody these are very, very old. These are like 40 years old. Actually, they're 43 years old. Uh, they've been out in the weather, sitting in the junkyard for the last 30 years. Um, one of these was busted and cracked. You saw how I fixed that. The gel coat was missing on a lot of it, and what we did is we went ahead and repaired them to brand new condition. Um, I'd like to go ahead and say another thing is, is you can go ahead and use your spray on Bondo on this, and you can build that up super, super thick and block sand it down, because I know there's a lot of people out there thinking that. But when you do that, the problem is, is once the heat and the cold get to that piece, of, that piece that you fixed with your spray on Bondo, it's going to start cracking and crumbling and peeling off in big flaky pieces. So to fix this type of situation the proper way, this right here, which you've seen me do, is the way to do it. So we'll go ahead and block sand those out one more time. We're going to take them down to 320 and then we're going to go ahead and paint them. And uh, hopefully it's going to look beautiful when we're done. Just like the car does right there. watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.